So we're going to revisit the concepts of arithmetic sequences today, um, but this time we're going to extend it out to an arithmetic series, which remember from yesterday, a series would be not just the listing of numbers, but what happens when you add them all up. So I'm going to show you some formulas today that will help you with the series. We're going to work a little more in depth with the sequence formula as well. And then I'm also going to bring back the idea of summing the sequence that we did on our calculator yesterday. So this is one of those lessons where I'll give you more than one way to do a question and you decide which one you like best. I'll, I'll throw my two cents in as to which way I think is best, but, you know, to each their own. There's really no right or wrong way to do these questions, guys. It's all a matter of personal choice. All right, so remember our arithmetic sequence formula, which is given to you on your formula sheet. I think it's in that notation. I usually write the common difference before the, multi the uh, multiplying in the factor here. It doesn't matter, obviously, but just, that's the way I set it up. So remember a sub 1 being your first term of your sequence. Your common difference is d. And then n minus 1 indicates that's the nth term. And we explored that a little bit um, in greater detail when we're looking at arithmetic arithmetic sequences, if you're not building off of the first term, this can actually change. We saw that before with like how many steps away everything is. So the questions we give you for homework and on the test are, are pretty traditional. I guess I'll put it that way. There, there's no like crazy weird questions we're going to give you. Um, so as long as you get the basic idea, you should be fine. So remember the explicit formula. This is one of the versions of the explicit formula, but definitely not the only version your book gives. That's just the one that we like to use. And then today we're also going to discuss a topic called arithmetic means. So arithmetic means have to do with like blank spaces that are missing in your sequence. So we're going to talk about how we can find the arithmetic means that are missing. So first a little warm up. <clears throat> they want you to find the 38th term of an arithmetic sequence. So the fact that they said it is arithmetic and they're starting off the sequence for you, you should be able to figure this out. Now because we are not new to the arithmetic sequences, I would like to skip the step where I write the general formula and let's just write the formula for the 38th term. So the 38th term would start with the formula where it says the first term, which is negative 7. And then you're going to add the common difference. Can you tell what the common difference is, how they're hopping from step to step? Remember, common difference is adding, or some people view it as subtracting in some cases. But you're adding what? You're adding 2. And then in the formula, it says n minus 1, n indicating the nth term. But because we're in particular interested in the 38th term, that means this is a 38 minus 1. Some of you conceptualized that and said, well, I just figured out 37 more steps from the first term. Awesome. That's the same thing we're doing here. So on your calculator, when you throw that in, I believe you get a 67. All right, so here's a little bit of a new concept. Well, it's a new vocab term. It's not really a new concept to you. Arithmetic means would be um, just basically continuing in on the pattern kind of in the middle. So they're going to take out a chunk of the pattern and you got to figure it out. They used to put these questions on the ACT a lot and I haven't seen them too much on the SAT. You seen them on your studying at all for your test? Okay. So you never know. These are like concepts where even if you don't know what arithmetic mean means, you could probably kind of finagle your way to the right answer just by understanding how patterns work. But let's look at an example of what a missing arithmetic mean would look like. So we have this arithmetic sequence, and we're supposed to find three arithmetic means between 3.2 and 4.4. So the first thing I want you to notice is that when they say between 3.2 and 4.4, it goes exactly in that respective order. So you can't decide like to make 4.4 the first part of your sequence. It has to be the first one they listed. So this is your, if you want to call it the first term, and this is the other term. So when they say there's three arithmetic means, what you're going to do on your homework and on your test is you're going to put three blank spots in between those two numbers. Can you talk to me, though, about how many times you're going to hop from here to here? So you're going to have to add a common difference here and here and here. And then to get to 4.4, you have to add one more, right? You have to get there. So how many times did you add this common difference? One, two, three, four times. So you started with 3.2. And then you added four times whatever this common difference is, and you landed at 4.4. Well, that looks like an algebra equation to me, guys. Let's solve. So 
So we're finding our common difference to be 0.3. And then there's a question just like this on your test. So what they're going to want you to do is actually go back and find those little missing pieces. So if we're supposed to be adding 0.3 each time, this guy would give us, what, a 3.5, this would be 3.8, this would be 4.1. And then for, like, to make myself move on and feel confident that I did this right, does the pattern continue? If you add another 0.3, do you get to 4.4? Yeah. So I like those questions because they're very easy to tell before you move on if you've done them right. So here's one. Um, just some more practice working with arithmetic sequences. They tell you the 15th term is equal to 30. So this is a case where we're going to use the general formula, but we're going to use it in a very specific way for a very specific term. They told you the common difference is 1.4, and the question is, what is the first term? So I don't know a sub 1. We're going to leave that as a variable, which means that's the only thing I cannot know in this question. So we're going to have to use this clue about 30. So I'm going to say, instead of the general term of a sub n, I'm going to call that the number 30. Now we know, in the back of our brains, we know that this is the 15th term. So keep that in mind when we continue on here. I don't know a sub 1. I'm looking for that. They just told me the common difference is 1.4. And then in the parentheses here, n minus 1, remember, we're not working in the general term anymore. The term we used over here on the other side of the equation was the 15th term. So here in the parentheses is a 15 minus 1. Now again, there's people who conceptualize this and they just think, oh, well, if I need to back up 14 steps, how am I going to do that? And you can figure it out that way. That's absolutely beautiful. The same math is going to happen here, guys. So I'm going to need you to do that for me. What is 1.4 times 14? I'm sorry, what was it? Thank you. Oops, that's a plus. 19.6. And then final step, subtract. So you found your first term to be, I can totally subtract, 10.4. Awesome. And again, these are all the kind of questions where if you had all the time in the world, you could go back and double check that this works for the sequence. You guys know how pre-calc tests work, though. You really don't have all the time in the world, so just feel confident and move on. So this question, this time the thing they don't tell you is the common difference. So that's going to be a variable. It's going to stay a variable. The random term they're going to give you to work with is the 40th term. So when I go to write down my equation, I'm going to start with 142.5. The starting value is 6. I do not know the common difference. But then remember, this 142.5 that we're using as like our solution, that was the 40th term. So in the parentheses here, <clears throat> you actually have 39 steps. You have 40 minus 1 steps. All right, so first things first, you're going to have to subtract 6, which is 136.5. And then this is 39 times D. So last step is to divide. <clears throat> Did I do this right? Okay, cool. I right, divide by 39, please. What was it? 3.5. Awesome. So we have to kind of get used to using a random term that they give us if we're missing some other part of the sequence. So that's hard for kids to understand because that's not typically something they make you do in sequences, but it is something in pre-calc. All right, so this is um, on your notes. Yes, this is on your notes. And you're looking at some general term, which is 27. Well, this is fun. This time n is the variable. So this is going to be the solution over here. The first term is negative 12. The common difference is 3. And then remember the way the explicit formula works is it's n minus 1. So since n is unknown, we're just going to leave that as a variable. All right. Solve away. Uh, yeah, that's 39 <laughs> equals 3 times n minus 1. Now, rather than distributing the 3, I would just assume I divide by 3 right now. It's okay if you distribute it. You're just going to have a little extra work. Um, 13 equals n minus 1. So apparently we were working with the 14th term. So 
kind of nice to know in that general form, anything could be a variable. As long as you have the other clues to work with, you can solve for it. All right, so back to this new concept of arithmetic means between 17 and 39. So there are going to be three arithmetic means between these numbers. So starting at 17, you're going to have to put three blanks for these three missing puzzle pieces. And then 39 is your, your final piece. So how many times are you going to have to add this common difference to get to 39? Four times, yeah. So if you want to generalize how you figure this equation out, it's going to be one more than the arithmetic means hops to get to the next one, right? So 17 plus, you guys were telling me it was four of these common differences will get you to 39. So we solve. It's a weird one, huh? All right, so divide by four. I feel like I've done something stupid again. No, I'm okay. What's this come out to? Okay. So that's the common difference. So then when your teacher says, you need to tell me what these three arithmetic means are, this is not actually the answer. Go back to your puzzle and fill them in. So adding 5.5 would get us to, <laughs> yes, 22.5, add 5.5 again, is that 28, am I adding right, yeah. okay, cool, and then add 5.5, that's 33.5, and then just triple check if you added another 5.5, yeah, that would get you to 39, so I'm feeling like we did it right, because it, it works, <clears throat> all right, one more, I'm going to pause the video and freeze the screen. Let's see if you can figure it out. So hopefully you uh, didn't do too, too much work. They didn't actually want the particular arithmetic means. They wanted the sequence formula. So once we found the common difference of 2.25, we already knew the first term of the sequence, so we just threw them into the formula. Now, would you guys remember from our homework that was on that KUDO program? The answers were all in like that simplified form. So if they wanted a different explicit formula, they would have had you distribute the 2.25 and then collect like terms, obviously. So, let's see if I can add today 2.25 n minus 4.25 would have been the other version of the explicit formula that maybe a random standardized test or in a, maybe a computer program or some other multiple choice test might throw at you. So, don't be disheartened if you get the question and you look and you're like, wait, that's not my answer. It could just be simplified. All right, moving along to something new, sums. So not just sequences today, but now series as well. So you're going to have to add up all the terms. So we'll come back and discuss the sum of the sequence stuff again uh, in a few minutes. But I want to show you some new formulas, which are on your formula sheet, I believe. Can you guys confirm for me that both of these are on your formula sheet? It should be under an arithmetic heading of some sort. Okay, so there's two different formulas. And this is the one that you will probably use on the quiz if you choose to go this route. Um, this is an alternative formula. So you might be looking at those going, well, why would I need two different formulas? Well, it depends on what you have. So this formula right here, this first one, you would use this one if you know the first and the last term. So there's an old... Um, math story and I think it's actually based on quite a bit of truth and for the life of me I can't remember who it was it was like Gauss it was one of the famous mathematicians of his time but he was obnoxious during his school the story goes and he was a very small child and like I'm talking like a five-year-old and his teacher was really aggravated with him so he just he wouldn't stop like pestering everybody so they gave him some horrendous problem to do and he said why don't you add up all the numbers like one to a hundred and because he was brilliant he figured out a much faster way to do that. <laughs> he actually did this. So, um, yeah. Which, like, if you think about it mathematically, if you're trying to pattern solve, 
Like, you do an easier problem first. Like, you don't sit there and go, how am I going to add up 1 to 100? Like, you start adding, like, 1 to 3. And, like, oh, how could I generalize that process for 1 to 5 and 1 to 10? And um, I don't know why a 5-year-old would think like that. And that's why he's got a lot of things named after him in math. But uh, that's the old story. That I don't know if that's 100% true. Sorry, Internet. I think I just threw out some garbage at you. It's okay. It won't be the first thing on the Internet that's not true. Okay. <laughs> so if you know the first and last term, what you can do is you take the number of terms cut it in half, and then multiply that by the sum of the first and last terms. So little little whoever his name was, little Carl, I'm pretty sure that was Gauss, Carl, Carl Frederick Gauss, uh, he would add 1 and 100, so that gets you 101, and then you would divide it by, or sorry, multiply it by n over 2, so n would be 100 divided by 2, so multiply it by 50. What'd you get, Jeff? It's you and Carl. Did you get it? What'd you get? Yeah, cool. So you did 101 times 50? 50. Ah, oh, whoopsies. You already had an existing answer in there. Yeah, I gotcha. 50 50. Yeah. So a little five year old Carl was. 5,050, sir, and then give me another problem. So he did, and then he came back in like 30 seconds with the answer, so bummer. Yeah, anywho, moving on. Uh, this formula here, you would use this one if, uh, and if you kind of look carefully at it, notice what we don't have this time. We don't have the last term. So if you have, obviously the number of terms is important, but you need to have the first term, the n, and the D. So essentially you have the main components of an arithmetic sequence and you can use that formula. Now I'm going to give you a third method for finding the summation and that has to do with summing the series or the summing the sequence excuse me on our calculator and I'll be honest that's the way I do my whole like when I keyed your test I did almost the whole test that way because I just find it to be easier. I have a real hard time with multiple formulas and screwing them up so it's the dyslexia roars its head during my formula usage. So I tend to not use the formulas if I don't have to. All right, so this one, um, it is on your notes, I believe. Yep. And they want us to go ahead and do this. So since we have the first and the last term, we can go ahead and use this little triangular sum formula, I think it was called in some book. So n over 2, it says find the first 50 terms. So that's your n. So 50 over 2 times 11 plus 158. And you can type that baby in just like that on your calculator. And in no time, you have the answer of 4,225. That was nice. What'd you type now? <laughs> Give me a look. <laughs> okay, so that should be the answer. Tell me if it's not. But... Oh, wrong button. Darn those buttons. Okay. Well, guys, that was a lot faster than adding up 50 terms, right? Yeah. Let's take another example. Okay, find the 23rd partial sum, so that's fancy talk for add up the first 23 terms, of this arithmetic series. Now, this time I don't know the last number. So we could find it, or we could use the other formula. Because when you don't know the last term, do you remember that other formula? Now, I really hate this formula. i got to go look it up because I never, I never use this one clearly. This is why I'm... <laughs> I need you guys to write down this real quick. Or it's on your formula sheet, so just look on your formula sheet. But write this guy down. Oh, it's not? That's how much I hate it? I don't even use it. Okay. Well, hurry up and write it down. But then I'm going to show you what I do as a backup plan in case I don't have that formula, which apparently you won't have that formula. You just have to simply find the 23rd term. It won't be that bad. It's actually the same formula. They just have derived it in a way where it solves for the 23rd term. Did you write that down? Well, the problem is on a test, I won't give you that second formula, apparently. So you don't get to use it. So logic tells me that at this state in the game, we probably shouldn't practice it with that formula. If we're, unless you guys really love memorizing series formulas. No? No takers? Okay. So if you use that secondary formula, you guys would have the answer very quickly. But let's say we're on a test and we don't have that formula. Here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to find the 23rd term. 
Well, I see the it is an arithmetic se series, so we start with 173, and then, uh-oh, I don't know the common difference, but with a little subtraction, I think I could figure it out. What's your common difference? Is it minus 11? Okay, so you're subtract adding a negative 11 or subtracting 11, and then to get to the 23rd term, remember, that means you're doing 23 minus 1 steps. So real quick, a little calculation on your part. This is something. Is it negative uh, 69? So that is the 23rd term. So if they continued out, this last term that they're interested in is negative 69. Now I can go use that nice little formula that I do have. So the sum of the first 23 terms would be uh, 23 over 2. And then the first term. And then you can say plus negative 69. That's kind of weird, but whatever. You're typing, so what do you care? Change it to a subtraction if you want. And I didn't write this answer down, so I need to steal it from somebody. Oh, yes, I did. 1196. Cool. All right. So can I show you a backup plan to that question? And this is actually the way that I do this question. Remember yesterday we did some of the sequence? So what I want you to do on your notes is write down what we're about to type in the calculator. But remember, your calculator is very kind to you. And it's going to prompt you on what you're supposed to type in. Um, if you guys are still in sequence mode from yesterday, it's okay. If you're back in function function mode, it's okay. It doesn't matter. This stuff works in any mode. So the only thing that changes is if you're in sequence mode, the variable will be n. And if you're in function mode, the variable will be x. It doesn't matter because you're going to press the variable button. All right. So the first thing it's going to prompt you for once you pull up some of the sequence, and those of you who are forgetting where you found this, uh, you start by pulling up some by doing second stat. And then you go over to math. And then you go down to number five. And then while that prompt is already up, <laughs> then you go again to second stat. But this time you go over to ops. And then sequence is number five as well. It's magical that they're both number five, isn't it? So the first thing it's going to ask you for is the explicit formula. They didn't tell you the explicit formula. You still would have to kind of finagle a formula out of that sequence. But remember, you guys knew it was arithmetic. So you would type for the formula the first term, 173, and then you did have to figure out the common difference still. So minus 11 times the quantity. And then if you're in sequence mode, it'll be n minus 1. But if you're in function mode, it'll be x minus 1. So there's your formula. The next thing it asks you for is what variable are you using? And you go, well, I'm using the variable key. So in my case, it would have been n. And then it says, where do you want to start and stop? And we want to start at the first term and stop at the 23rd term. And then kablamo, you should get the same answer. So it's kind of potato, potato, right? At some point, you have to come up with a formula. So it's not like one way is easier than the other. I just like to stick with what I know, and I really know the arithmetic sequence formula. The sum formula, I often will forget. Um, and either way, you had to find that formula to find that 23rd term anyways. So you have to kind of start making a decision as you practice your homework. Like, ooh, do I want to use like four different formulas? Do I want to just stick with some of the sequence? It's up to you guys. Totally up to you guys. You can try a little of each. Whatever you want. All right, flip to the back. What time is it? Because it's the wrong time. I know, for plenty of time. All right. So they want the 82nd. Well, this is bad news. I am not going to write out 82 terms. So let's talk about this sequence. What do you know about it, starting with what's the common difference? Mm. <laughs> We're subtracting 3 each time. So you're adding negative 3. You're going to need to know that regardless of whatever method you choose. Um, for me, I'm, if I was doing this on a test, I would do some of the sequence. If you want to try that new formula that we just learned today, that's cool, but you're going to have to find the 82nd term at some point. Okay. So you need to find this if you're going to use that, that formula. For me though, I'm doing some of the sequence. 
Real quick, show hands out there. Anybody going to use that new formula we learned, the n over 2? Okay, you keep going. I'm doing some of the sequence, and I want to make sure we match at the end of this. So I'm going to have to type in my explicit formula, which I don't have, but I can figure out real quick. It is the first term, and then it's, instead of plus negative 3, I'm just going to write minus 3 times n minus 1. n comma 1 comma 82 and I according to my key I got negative 10,045 did you get that too cool so even though we took different approaches we both ended up with something that looked like this at some point on our paper because she had to find the 82nd term and then she could use that beginning and ending formula so either way, we're all in the same boat at the beginning. We have to find some version of that formula. Did anyone try that second formula that isn't going to be on your test, but just for funsies? No? No takers? See, you guys are lazy like me, and I can appreciate that. Why learn something if I can't use it? <laughs> That's a terrible message to send, guys. Don't be saying that. Okay, here, here's what I will say about that secondary formula. If you're a very clever math person, you can actually derive that formula based on your work on the first formula. Because when you guys found that 82nd term, you used that arithmetic sequence formula. And if you look closely at that second formula, it's a combination of the two. Okay? Oh man, this is like a birthday, guys. This time they did tell me the beginning and ending term. So maybe this time I just suck it up and I use that new formula because they already gave me the ending term. So sum of the first 25 terms would be... 25 over 2, and then 7 plus 79 as a quantity. Is it 1,075? Yeah, cool, cool. All right. Um, let's freeze the screen and the video. I want you guys to try eight, any method you want. All right, so I scribbled down something for both methods. Either way, did we all get 11,660? Cool, cool. All right. So if you're becoming a fan of this new formula, it's awesome. You will have to find the last term sometimes. If you are a fan of some of the sequence, cool. You just got a lot of typing. But we experienced that yesterday where we could just pull up the previous entry and edit it. It's a bit of a shortcut, but sometimes that's even more annoying than just retyping it because of the overtype feature on your calculator. So just watch out for that. All right, so now on 9 and 10, they give you this weird sigma notation, which we know means to sum all of them. So this time it's the third to the 15th term. Um, this time for sure I want to use sum of the sequence. So here's the reason why. They flat out tell you the explicit formula. You don't even have to think about it. So everybody on the calculator, I'll even pull mine up for once. Or not. By the time I get my calculator pulled up, you guys will be done. <clears throat> yeah. So stat math. Whoops. Five. And then while you're in there, second stat ops five. All right. So got to overtype or clear that out. The formula was three n plus one. I'm still in sequence mode, so it's gonna stay as n. And then didn't it start at three. Was it 3 to 15 on this one? So watch out, you got to change that. And then paste. And then hit enter. And kablamo, 364. Okay. Now, could you have used that other formula? Yes. But you would have had to found the third and the 15th term by plugging them into the formula. And then you had to be a little careful about what that meant for n. Because... What is 3 to 15? <laughs> Math. And you're like, wait, is this the one where I add 1 or subtract 1, or do I just subtract the numbers? So think of a smaller problem. If you have, like, terms 1 and 2, that's two terms, right? So you can take the difference between them, but you got to add one more to it. So 3 to 15 would be 13 terms, okay? I know I just messed with your minds, didn't I? So you can vote no for that method is my, my vote. Because that's kind of annoying to think about how many terms you have when you aren't explicitly told how many terms you have. All right, anywho. Next question. Whoops. Again, it's a sigma notation question. It says, do you use the formula? All right. 
I do as I command. So if you really want to use that formula, that's great, but you're going to have to find, well, how many terms is it, first of all? 42. <laughs> so if you want to think of it as 42 minus 1, but then you have to plus 1 to it, it's the difference between them plus 1 if you're worried about that. 42 over 2 times, womp womp, don't have either of them. All right, find the first term, plug in a 1. What'd you get? 2. Find the 42nd term, plug in a 42. That's right, kids, 84. All right, and then type that in for me. Is it 1806? Cool. So it wasn't terrible. Just had to do a little math. Um, so this was a sub 1, and this was a sub 42. All right, let's look at this application real quick. Do I have time? Please tell me yes. This theater question shows up on your, it might show up on your post-test. It for sure shows up on your test. Yes. Yeah. Do both methods? No, no, no. It's your choice, which sometimes that sort of freedom is alarming because you're, like, worried you're doing it wrong. I will tell you, I use some of the sequence on every single question where it asked me to sum things, and I was fine. So if you guys wanted, if you just wanted one method, that's fine. Um, Wakefield Auditorium has 26 rows. The first row has 22 seats, and then as you go backwards, it increases by four. So how many seats are in the last row? Well, this is an arithmetic sequence because you're adding four as you go. So the first thing I might want to do is figure out the formula, like the general formula. So it starts with 22, and then you add four times n minus one. That's how the pattern works, the formula. So the last row would be the 26th row. So 22 plus 4, and then times, because it's the 26th row, it's 26 minus 1, or 25 additions. How many seats are in there? Is it 122? Could you imagine being in the middle of that row? Excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> All 50, whatever of you people. 60, whatever you are. All right, so that's how many seats are in the last row of the auditorium. But now they want the seating capacity. Now, they didn't say the words, but they, they're they asking you to add them all up, right? you got to add up all the rows. So it's a sequence. It's a sum of the sequence. So it is up to you. You guys have the first and last. So I think using this formula might be brilliant since you have the first and last row. Um, first row was, oh, wait, 26. So 26 over 2. First row was, I forgot already, 22 seats. We just found out how many are in the last row. It was 122 seats. And if I use my little formula, I end up with 1,872 seats. If you're not a fan of that and you wanted to sum the sequence, you sure could have. All right, what's my time now? Was that in your book? The exact question? Secret genius, you. You and Carl Frederick Gauss. That a girl. Awesome. You conceptualized it. Magical. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the salary question real quick. So first year's salary is 34500 and then thereafter, um, they're going to get an increase of Seven fifty. So there's the common difference. What were what will the salary be during the tenth year? So let's go ahead and find the tenth year using our formula. So starting with thirty four five hundred, and then remember they're gaining seven fifty every year, and then for ten years, but they only got nine raises, right? You don't get a, a raise the minute you start working. So ten minus one is what goes in the formula. So this person is making four thousand, no, four twenty one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars in the tenth year. So when they say total, that just means to sum it up. So since we know the first and last, I say we use that formula. So the sum of all twenty five years of twenty five. Wait, what? I didn't find twenty five. Can you hurry up and find the twenty fifth year for me? <laughs> I didn't write this down, so I'm going to need to steal your answer. 
too many numbers. I don't want to read them. I just want them. What does she make in the 25th year? So I need 34,500 plus 750 times 24. Like that? Okay, cool. All right, so 25 over 2. And then her first year. Man, flat raises are not cool. Talk to a teacher, they'll tell you. All right, what'd she make? Is it 1 million? 0, 8, 7, 500. Someone confirm on that number? Nope. Yes? Nope? Oh, okay. <laughs> you shook your head at me. I thought, oh, man. Oh, I gotcha. No, I'm not going to do any work for you. Why would I do work? All right. <laughs> there we go. So you guys have a glorious assignment. I bet she put it in the next page, didn't she? Or one page out there. Bless your heart, Hoffauer. It's somewhere, guys. It might be on a previous page or something. I bet it's there. It's on the back of one of the 5.5s or something. Yeah, that sounds right. What a sweetheart. She's so nice. Bye.